Welcome to everybody, especially welcome if you're watching on Zoom. It is fantastic to have you here with us this morning. We hope you're going to be able to see and hear the words to the songs were sent out in an email and they're also on Facebook if you need them. In a moment we're going to start and our first song, Rejoice, Rejoice, Christ is in you. You may want to find the words so that you've got them to hand. Welcome to our worship here out of doors. We can sing and praise God with no masks. We can lift our voices to the heavens. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. May God help us to worship in spirit and in truth this morning. Let's sing together, rejoice, rejoice. Christ is in you, the hope of glory in your hearts. together almighty god we thank you for this opportunity to gather together to praise and worship you for you are worthy of all our thanks and worship and praise you are the creator god who has made all things good you are the savior god who gave your son jesus christ to save us from our sin when we had wandered out of your light and into darkness you sent him to be the light of the world to die on the cross for our sin and to rise from the dead to give us new life eternal life life in all its fullness so we come today to praise you to thank you for all your mercies for us day by day help us lord to know you better help us to serve you more in the week ahead from the time we're spending together now as we ask these things in jesus name amen 
let's keep on praising God again on our next page of our service sheet. Come on and celebrate. His gift of love, we will celebrate the Son of God who loved us. one of the best known of Jesus' parables, the parable of the Good Samaritan. We find it in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, from verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the Lord, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself you've answered correctly said Jesus do this and you will live but he wanted to justify himself so he asked Jesus and who is my neighbor in reply Jesus said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and he went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him, 
He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. When I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Sidney Carter wrote a song based on that parable and also on the parable of the sheep and the goats. When I needed neighbour were you there were you there let's sing that song which is on the orders of service who are going through hard times or, or facing difficult situations and helping them in practical ways. How often have you poured out blood, sweat and tears giving assistance to people in need? And how many of those people weren't actually your family or your close friends but maybe were strangers? Put it another way, how often have you been a good Samaritan? The parable has been so familiar us. Its central character is part of our language, the Good Samaritan. And Jesus told this story to answer the important question, who is my neighbour? And the answer is very simple, we know the story very well. When a person finds himself in need, his neighbour is the one who helps him. The man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers and they stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. We don't know here whether the victim is a, a respectable man uh, or he was a thief robbed by other thieves. We, we don't know. All that matters is that he was helped by a complete stranger. The person who helps him is, indeed, is more than a stranger. He's, he's a traditional enemy. Not a religious person like a priest, not uh, a Levite, but, but a Samaritan, a descendant of the northern tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, rather than the southern tribe of Judah from whom the Israelites descended. Different tribes. And by the time of Jesus, different religions too. The Samaritans didn't worship God in Jerusalem, instead on Mount Gerizim. The Samaritan would be the last person that a Jew would expect to help him. To the Jew, the idea of a good Samaritan is a contradiction in terms. 
the edit of the Samaritan who happens to be going past and takes the big risk of helping the man in need. He's the one who's the neighbour. He helps the man who's in trouble. A Samaritan, as he travelled, came to where the man was. When he saw him, he took pity on him. The Samaritan cared. He had compassion. And that compassion expressed itself in practical action. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. When I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. The Samaritan showed compassion, leading to practical action, which didn't come cheap. Two days' wages for that help. We can be good at feeling pity. Sometimes we're not as good at getting stuck in, getting our hands dirty, helping out. The good Samaritan gave the practical assistance to the man who'd been robbed. Which of these do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. That's right, said Jesus, so now you go and do likewise. That's what it means to love our neighbours, to help out in practical ways. Folk who are complete strangers to us in their time of trouble, to have compassion to show pity, to show mercy, to care. Jesus calls us to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. And this is the heart of the Christian life, to love people, to show God's kind of love to complete strangers. Just like in the parable of the sheep and the goats, <clears throat> feeding the hungry and the thirsty, welcoming the strangers, clothing the naked, taking care of the sick, visiting prisoners, because when we do so, we know we are serving Christ in them. God calls us to see Christ in each other and through each other. Sometimes even Bible-believing Christians can be too preoccupied with our Bible studies and our prayer meetings to help other people. Perhaps like the priest, perhaps like the Levite who had important things to do that day. So they pass by, leaving the suffering victim to die. There are Christians who deserve the criticism that they're too heavenly minded to be of any earthly use. Gavin Reed, the one time Anglican Bishop, Bishop, Archbishop's advisor on evangelism, Gavin Reed wrote, we can have too many Christian activities. We run the risk of arranging that we are in the different world from our neighbours. I was hungry, and you formed a humanities club and discussed my hunger. Thank you. I was imprisoned, and you crept off quietly to your chapel and prayed for my release. That's nice. I was naked, and in your mind you debated the morality of my appearance. What good did that do? I was sick, and you knelt and thanked God for your health. But I needed you. I was homeless and you preached to me of the spiritual shelter of the love of God when I wish you'd taken me home. I was lonely and you left me alone to pray for me. Why didn't you stay? You seem so close to God, but I am still very lonely and hungry and cold. Who's my neighbour? Anybody I can show God's love to. Anybody who needs my help today. Part of the problem we need to ask is our neighbour. Uh, we may not know the folk living opposite to us, even living next door to us. In the last year it's been ever so difficult to relate to our neighbours in any normal way. As the window opens, as we can start mixing again together in each other's gardens, over the garden fence, we can start to show God's love to our neighbours. We can get to know them well enough so that we can help hurting. We need to take time to get to know them, to meet the needs which are there, even in comfortable North Springfield, places of need across Chelmsford. 
In the New Testament, that was their approach to evangelism. They simply preached the word of God. They shared the good news of Jesus and they helped people. They healed the sick. They drove out demons. They fed the hungry. They loved their neighbors. That was their way of doing outreach. They brought people to Christ by being good Samaritans to them. One church shows up that kind of lifestyle in its vision statement. They say, find a need and meet it. Find a hurt and heal it. If each of us go out of our way and give real practical help to just one or two acquaintances each year, if even one in ten of those want to know more about Jesus and come to believe in him, that will be more effective than anything else we do in outreach. Just loving each other and loving strangers like that. God doesn't call us to like our neighbours, he calls us to love our neighbours. So what will that look like in practice? There are three kinds of people in this parable of the Good Samaritan. The robbers, they said, what's yours is mine, I'm going to take it. There was a priest and a Levite. They passed by on the other side. They said, what's mine's my own, I'm going to keep it. And then there was the Samaritan who said, what's mine is yours, let's share it. Loving our neighbours as our love ourselves means if their family is hungry and your family is hungry, you share the food you've got with them and not keep it to yourself. If their family is sick and your family is sick, you look after them together. If they've got nowhere to sleep and you do, you find them a bed. If they need to travel and you're able to give them a lift or help them to travel, you do that. If your loved one is dying and their loved one is dying, you support each other. If their child is lost and your child is lost, you all set out to find the children together. If they're in debt and you have money, you help them with money. If you face a problem, you sort out their problem with them. Because that's good Samaritan love. That's loving your neighbour as you love yourself. Not just those in the Christian family, not those in your birth family, but strangers. Helping the neighbour in need. I know you are already good Samaritans. Uh, and most good Samaritans in secret so that your neighbour doesn't know who you are helping. But this is a parable that speaks to us again and again. Because it does bring us to kinds of characters. Two memorable phrases in our language. The first is the Good Samaritan. The second, the people who pass by on the other side. What kind of people are we? Are we Good Samaritans? Or are we those who just pass by on the other side? As we come out of lockdown, as we're able to go out and help our neighbours more than anything else, that's what God wants us to be doing. If anyone says to love God and hates his brother, he's a, a liar. Everyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he's not seen. If we don't love the people we can see, how can we say we love God who we don't see? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Let's not just talk about love, let's put real love into practice. Love your neighbours as you love yourself, said Jesus. Go and do likewise. So let's pray together. And Father God, as we emerge from this time of lockdown, give us opportunities, we pray, to show your love to each other and also to the strangers that you bring across our path. We do pray for those in Chelmsford, 
for whom this has been a hard year. For those who have been sick, and for those who are still sick, give them your healing, we pray. And for those who have lost loved ones in death, give them your peace. And help us, Lord, to be ones who bring your healing and your peace to others in need. We pray for those who've lost their jobs, for those who've been struggling for money, and we pray, Lord, help us to show them your love in practical ways. As we pray around the world for those still going through difficult times, and we remember particularly the continent of India, where COVID has such a hold on the people. Bring your peace. Bring your healing to that nation, we pray. Help the nations of the world to help each other. Vaccines be spread generously and widely. May medical help, and at this time particularly supplies of oxygen, oxygen concentrators, ventilators, may these resources be spread to where they are most needed. In the quietness we pray for those who need our prayers. Today we lift before you Nora. We pray for Naomi and for Annette. We pray for Stuart. And for other friends in different kinds of need. And we join together praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So let's commit ourselves to God, singing together. With a prayer you fed the hungry. Love incarnate, love divine, captivate this heart of mine till all I do speaks of you.
So let's bless one another in the words of the grace, really loud so that the people out in Zoom land can hear it properly. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for being here this morning, folks.